I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Kristen Nabello, who is courageously sharing her empowering true story in Sunrise, Life After Traumatic Brain Injury, A Healing Journey in Surviving TBI. A traumatic accident left her grappling with a severe brain injury, but her underlying spirit and determination allowed her to thrive beyond all expectations. And today she is an inspiring advocate for the TBI community, using her voice to uplift survivors and their loved ones, and to transform the narrative surrounding TBI into one of hope and positivity. We're delighted to have Kristen join us today on Spotlight. We thank the folks at Authors Reputation Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. Kristen, terrific to see you today. Hi, great to see you too, Logan. Thank you for having me and I'm very honored. Thank you. Oh, oh the honor is all mine. You really are a terrific spokesperson and advocate for TBI because you expect someone to come on who's been through a traumatic brain injury to be, you know, less joyful, less filled with life, you know, than you are. You really do have a great spirit. Oh, you... Thank you for saying that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Let's start out by telling the folks at home the backstory. What happened to you? And oh. let's start, let's start there. Okay. Let's start there. Um, well, we were on a morning run, my husband and I, it was my last training run for the Marine Corps Marathon. Mm -hmm. And um, we were maybe a half a mile into it. And unbeknownst to us, there was a car, a four-door sedan coming behind us going 25 miles per hour. And obviously, we didn't know. Um, the sidewalk ended and we ended up in the median of the road. Hmm. Um, the sun was in the person's eyes and hmm. he could not see. And therefore he hit me um, going 25 miles per hour and instant coma. Wow. So that's a long story short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How long did your coma last and what was the recovery like? Okay, the coma lasted seven days and the recovery, you know, it was a slow drip process. Um, the brain is slow to heal, mm -hmm. but the power of plasticity of the brain is nothing short of amazing. It it's you you have to always think with the brain it was it's a marathon and not a sprint. Mm. If you're a runner or if that goes yeah, with absolutely the <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a, a longer race than a shorter race, that's for right. sure. Um, but as you said, the brain does have a lot of neuroplasticity, there's a lot yeah. of unused portions of the brain. So the brain is also a resilient organ as well, correct? Yes, I can say that. Very resilient. You would never think, I mean, our bodies are so fragile, but they're so resilient at the same time. What were the after effects other than the coma following the accident? Oh boy. Um, okay. So <laughs> Do you want me to start with the broken bones? Um, but you know, you can, yeah, you can just give us yeah. a rundown. So you had broken bones, so mobility was an issue. Yes, yeah. the part of my brain that was affected was. Um, sorry, I'm getting cut up here. Oh no worries. Um, sorry about that. Um, the part of my brain that was getting affected was the cerebellum it was mm -hmm. neatly sliced in half and with your cerebellum you walk you mm -hmm. use balance you walk all of that good stuff um many parts uh, my pituitary gland was affected that is the hormones mm -hmm. and the thirst there there are a lot of a lot of 
different things in the brain that were affected. So I had to basically, long story short again, um, you have to, or I had to learn to walk, talk, eat, all of it, all over again. At the time I had a 18 month old. And so I was basically my 18 month old, just learning to do things in life all over again. Amazing. Amazing. And were you mentally cognizant of everything? Uh, you know, at first, no, I was not. Mm -hmm. uh, when I woke up from the coma, I was not. As time slowly progressed, yes, I became more and more aware, slowly but surely, mm -hmm. Um I would remember that my mom had let me know in the hospital that I had been hit by a car and none of it made sense to me at the time. But as time went on, I would remember little things like that. And yes. Yeah. Anyway. So, so it was like a puzzle that was being pieced back together again. <laughs> yes. You started figuring it all out. How long do you, are you fully recovered now? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. I would say 98%. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. I I mm. mean, yeah, I think. How many years later is it? It's 20 years later. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It's been 20 years. Yeah. And I know, like I said at the beginning of this interview, you're a very hope filled person. You're a very, you know, enthusiastic person. Was it always like that? Was it? What did you go through the why me phase of it? You know, honestly, Logan, no, I didn't never once. That's one strange thing about every, you know, I've been reading my whole life and I don't understand why I never said why me. Yeah. N never did I say that. Yeah. And, you know, I just tried to make light of the whole situation. And like I said, I wasn't aware why everybody was so down at the hospital and yeah. cheering me on. I honestly, at the time, didn't understand any of that. Well, and they're, they're worried they're ever going to have Kristen back to where she once was, right? Yeah. So yes. they, they see you there bruised and bandaged and hearing unbelievable reports from the doctor, like your cerebellum is sliced in two. And... <laughs> you know, everybody around you is saying, how can she survive this? How can she, 20 years later, will she still be here? And here you are. So that's part of your testament. That's part of your journey, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. And that's why I actually wrote the book. Um, I wrote the book for my husband and for my family. I This is the book I wish they had when mm. every was taking place yeah. um just to give them hope and inspiration look what happened to this person right. and she did it yeah yeah i'm sure it was very hard on your husband you know mm -hmm. very 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 yes was he struck also by the vehicle he was not okay. he felt me uplifted and Thrown. He, yes, it was not a good scene. Obviously, I don't remember it. Right. Um, but what was it like for you writing the book? Was it uh, a painful journey back? Was it therapeutic? What, tell me about that. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, here I went into writing the book because I wanted to help other people. I wanted to give hope and inspiration to other people. However, <laughs> when I started writing, everything came up on the table. Um, I became very vulnerable, learning the truths that maybe have been told to me mm. in the past, but I don't recall them. Um, every, every piece of detail came alive on and this time I was conscious. Right. For you know, I was not conscious the first time. Yeah. So anyway, it was it was a very cathartic 
writing journey and so happy I did it that other people can learn from my book and maybe give them hope, maybe inspire them. Yeah. Absolutely. But every brain at the same time as saying that every um, traumatic brain injury is different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause in many ways the brain is uncharted territory, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Has your life changed since the TBI? I know you say you're, at least 98% back to where you were. But what about your perspective on life? What about the way you view things? What about your relationships? Has, are they better, stronger, you know, more cherished? Tell me a little bit about that aspect of the change in your life. Yes, another great question. Thanks. Yes, of course, ever since 20 years ago, everything has changed. Um, Golly, everything, just the way I have relationships to pe with people. I am, my husband and I have a stronger relationship. We have two awesome boys, um, 22 and 19, almost 19. They're wonderful and friendships are very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And through this whole experience in the last 20 years, I don't want to just go just to that time. You just notice, I don't know who your true friends are yeah. and maybe those who really maybe are on the outskirts, you know, right. Right. I, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> no, when push comes to shove, you find out who your true friends are. I think a lot of people learned that lesson during COVID they found yes, out who the people who truly are to that. close to them. Yeah, absolutely. So you have a 22-year-old and a 19-year-old. The 22-year-old was 18 months old when you were dealing with this. Yes. And then you had a baby pretty shortly after that. Yes. I, you know, I I had such a desire to get pregnant. Um, hold on. Let me, I'm sorry. You're sure. cutting up over here. Okay, there you are. Um, yes, I had my second son four years later. Mm. So I wasn't supposed to get pregnant because of all the, you know, the yeah, dire the injuries situation to your pituitary, uh, you know, and even the stress of childbirth, I would think would be a lot on you considering what you've been through. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, when I got the clearance from the doctor, um, we went for it and it happened, yeah. miracle. And so I'm very blessed to have my family, to have my family, to be alive and to share my story with others in hopes of maybe shining some light and giving them some hope. Absolutely. Is working with the TBI community now your full-time profession? Um, actually, yes, but no. Um, okay. Bringing up my kids was my full-time profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, but yes, always since it happened, since 20 years ago, I have always been a helping hand in the, TBI community, yeah. whether it was a, being a sounding board or recommendations or anything, I always, I always and forever will be there for them Yeah, and their families. That's, that's great of you. They, they certainly need an advocate like you for sure. How long did it take you to write the book? You know, the writing of the book, it was, it was not long, um, mm -hmm. maybe, and it was actually before COVID. Right. It wasn't long. It was maybe six months. Um, and then because I I say a short time because after going into this book world, I realized, oh, it does take a very long time to write books. Mm -hmm. um, but this story was ready written by God. I was, right. You know, it's like my story was already there. I just had to put it on paper. 
Yeah. Um, just like many of us, we all have stories that people can learn from. How important was your faith through all of this? <laughs> awesome question. Um, very, very important. Yeah. Number one, I always, I always have been faithful, but even more faithful since the accident 20 years ago. Yeah. Most definitely. Hands down. Exactly. And how have your professional experiences with uh, Halliburton and Texas Children's Hospital influenced your perspective on TBI? You know, that is a great question. I, you know, you have to, with the TBI, you have to put your work perspective in line with recovery. And I was also... At that time in my life, I was training for big races. My right. ultimate thought was to go into um, the Ironman. But that's back back then. You know how we all have dreams. So I was training. That's why I was doing the Chicago Marathon. Um, because I was in the midst of training to get to that final Ironman state. But... Anyway, so putting back to your question, going, uh, just putting that way of thinking, training into the hospital and getting better, mm -hmm. that was my mindset, if that makes sense. Sure. I don't know if that makes sense coming out. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Tell us about Kristen and Raul uh, Abello Day. Kristen and Raul Bello Day, yes. The mayor, Mayor Anise Parker, was so kind and Tier was so kind to, to actually give us that day. Mm. Um, we were very honored. That's just uh, Kristen Raul Bello Day. Um, it's just celebrating the good things in life. And us being such advocates for traumatic brain injury. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's nice to get the recognition. Question for you. Have you, you were very active, obviously, uh, prior to the accident. Are you still active? Do you still enjoy act outdoor activities and running and all that stuff? Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Love yeah. it. But I'm not as good as I was back then. Right. Like, you know, maybe my runs now have a run and a walk in them. <laughs> right, right. Well, 20 years later, we're all walking and running and not running all the time. Right. <laughs> 20 years ago, I ran faster as well. So you're not alone. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did that help with your uh, recovery, though, and your healing journey, being active yeah. outside still? Oh, yes. Always get a breath of fresh air and being... Yes, being active outside, whether it's hiking, biking, running, walking, anything outdoors. Right. I mean, it's wonderful in any healing process. For sure. For sure. And it makes you feel like, you know, you're still out there. You're still competing, even if it's just against yourself. <laughs> you know, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. It. What strategies and coping mechanisms did you find most helpful during your recovery? Um, you know, some days I would have bad days, yeah. um, obviously. Uh, and, you know, I would just say to myself, I, I got to do this. I've got to do this. I will get better. Yeah. I will get better. Even if it was two steps back, five steps forward, then another three steps back. So yeah. I just made sure to always tell myself, I can do this, I can do this. And I did it for my husband and my son and my entire family. Interesting. It's, you know, it's funny. I had the privilege of interviewing Christopher Reeve multiple times during his life, uh, including... Yes including exactly. to one of his last interviews. And I asked him, how does it feel being a role model? And he said to me, nobody wants to be a role model. Nobody puts it on their resume. Um, 
you know, he did not, in my opinion, have the optimistic attitude that you have. Perhaps it's because he was more grievously injured. I mean, the man couldn't even sweat. He couldn't breathe. Right. He couldn't move a muscle from right. the neck, you know. Exactly. That, oh, that killed me. Yeah, uh. it is. But I will ask you that same question, whether it was a bad one for Chris or Reeve, I'll ask it to you. What's it like being a role model? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, yes. You know, you just always have to be on top of your game, but people need to know. Mm, ah, that's a tough one. I gotta, I yeah. gotta, I gotta think. Digest it a little bit. Yeah. Christopher yeah. Reeves. I mean, he's awesome and I love him dearly. Right. And, always, and well, he always Superman tried to live with hope. One. Yeah. He was, he tried to live with hope. He, you know, like I said, I, I was with him and a team of people were working on him to keep his body temperature at the right temperature. You know, he's transported in an ambulance always. He couldn't sweat. Uh, it was it was awful, but he always felt that one day they'd come up with something. I mean, so the hope for a cure or a hope for a treatment, I guess, is always in the back of your mind when you've been hurt seriously, right? Yes. And yeah. for some reason or another, I have been blessed with being able to walk and having my life back. Yeah. I'm so blessed that, you know, I'm always in awe about it. Um, and I want to give back. And I, that's, I feel like I am doing that yeah. in the last 20 years since survival. Um, and I'm always here for anybody who may need, but it is it is a big responsibility to be that to be that person. Absolutely. You know, because you don't want to let anybody down. Or maybe right. that's just my personality. <laughs> right. right. Well, you've given a great gift to the public. It's your book. It's called Sunrise, Life After Traumatic Brain Injury, a healing journey in surviving. Kristen Abello is a devoted wife, mother, and a dynamic force of resilience. She has overcome her TBI, her traumatic brain injury, and she's done it with grace, with faith, and with true grit. And we are delighted to have her here today on Spotlight. Kristen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Logan. It was an honor. Thank you. Yeah, the honor is all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. Okay, you did a great job, Kristen. Well, I hope. Um, thanks. You know what I meant to mention? What's that? Um, the proceeds of the book okay. go to the hospitals. Okay, so I will, I'll try to mention that or I'll have my team mention it in the um, notes underneath the um, the learn more section on the uh, on the streaming links. That would be awesome. Okay. Because the more books that are sold and the more TBI journals that are sold right. goes to the research at the hospitals for TBI. Okay, great. So we'll mention that proceeds go to the research for TBI for sure. The folks at Authors Reputation Press will have all the links and everything. Should be streaming in about a week, okay? Okay, thank you. Great. True pleasure meeting you, Kristen. Uh, You're awesome. Great interview. Have a good one. You too. Take care okay. now. Bye-bye. Peace.